this is a pretty good time to track. There's very little wind and the sun is quite low on the horizon. Now hopefully you'd like to learn how to track so as you can get close to animals to study them. When I was a little boy, I used to play truant from school and I fell behind with my reading of books. But my father taught me how to read one of the most beautiful books in the world. The Book of the Wilderness, the stories in the sand, and there are many of them. And I want to take you to the plains behind me with my good friend Pioneer, who's one of the great trackers of Africa, and we're going to show you just how to track. When tracking, remember, we use all our senses. Sight, smell, hearing, and feel. One's eyes soon become trained to see animals in the bush because animals have a different form to trees and they're usually found standing underneath trees. Remember that animals can see us too. So don't wear bright colors in the bush. They can also smell us. So don't wear aftershave lotion or perfume. Hearing is important too. What's that? That's a kudu barking. He can hear us as well, so when you communicate with each other, do it in low whispers or soft whistles, because human voices are not natural to the bush. Do you smell that smell? And do you hear that? That's zebra. I can hear them and I can smell them. And remember, they can smell us too. So when you're tracking, always track into the wind. We also use the feeling in our hands while we're tracking. We can feel the temperature of the dung. That'll tell us if it's quite recent. And we can break the dung open to see if there's beetles inside. Then we know it's, it's quite old. And if we look where the dung is and it's, the grass underneath is yellow, then we know the dung has been there for quite some time. What's that? That's a clip springer. Now getting down to the tracks, we can often tell what kind of animals they are by the shape of the tracks. Most antelope have got triangular tracks, except for that clip springer, which has parallel tracks. But the lechwe and sitatungu, which are animals that live in marshy areas, have splayed out tracks. Of course, the warthog and the bush pig have also got parallel tracks. What's that? That sounds like a bat-eared fox. He's part of the dog family. The dog family have got tracks with two lobes on the back pad and they have nails. But the cats have three lobes on the back pad and their tracks are slightly rounded and there are no nail prints on the tracks because cats retract their nails when they walk, except for the cheetah and the civet cat. They have nails which are protruded all the time. So if you find a cat track with three lobes on the back and nails, then you know it's a civet cat or a cheetah. Zebra have got tracks like donkeys. In the olden days, poachers used to take a herd of donkeys with them and they used to use the donkeys to cover their own tracks. People thought it was a herd of zebra going through. Buffalo have tracks like cattle, and giraffe have large parallel tracks, just like warthog, but I don't think you'll get a warthog about that size. Incidentally, you will never hear a giraffe because he has very little or no voice. Maybe a very soft moo that nobody's really heard before. And here is a muddy patch. You can see a zebra spur. Put your own footprint next to the zebras. Now lie on your stomach and facing the east where the sun is rising. With the track in between you and the sun, you will see that the print slowly fills up with sand, grain by grain. Those of the zebra have more sand in them than yours. So you should be able to calculate with the grains of sand how old the track is. 
Now look where they walked through this grass. Some of the saplings are broken. And look at the blades of grass. They're all flat. They'll stand up later. So these tracks are very recent. But remember, learning to track is like learning to read. It takes many years of practice. Start practicing now and you'll be able to read one of the most beautiful books in the world, the Book of the Wilderness. When I was a little boy I never ever learned to read But we lived in the wilderness and there really wasn't a need But my father said, son you must look All around you there's a beautiful book And it's yours for the reading if you will only listen to me Yeah, he said you can hear it on the wind Smell it on the breeze, see it on the grass and the twigs of the trees And all over this beautiful land, wherever you look, there's a story in the sand He said, son, when you're tracking, try to walk into the wind Keep your nose up, be wary of the scents that drift in Zebra and old buffalo and elephant smell you will know But always remember that they can also smell you Yes, he said you can hear it on the wind, smell it on the breeze See it on the grass and the twigs of the trees And all over this beautiful land, wherever you look There's a story in the sand not only to listen for movement and sound but also to watch for the droppings that fall to the ground he said son you must see if they're fresh and then you will have a good guess to know when the one you are following has passed by walk with care never upon dry leaves It's easy to be deceived Spore of the zebra looks just like a donkey Buffalo looks like a cow Sometimes a bush baby looks like a monkey Gotta be careful now He taught me to look at the grains of sand in the track He taught me to look at the grass that had not sprung back He taught me to look at the dew to see if the trail was quite new He taught me to read The beautiful book of the wild Yes He said hear it on the wind Smell it on the breeze See it on the grass And the twigs of the trees And 